Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for May 6th, 2020. So yesterday, we did get that nice follow through. We popped up off of that 50 day moving average here in the Dow on Monday. We shot up yesterday, but then at the end of the day, we saw a little pressure coming into the market. This morning, however, we're seeing some follow through bullishness. We're trying to gap up a little bit this morning. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's grab ourselves something to drink, and let's get ready for the morning market preparation video. So it's hump day, and we're looking at a market facing some interesting situations. One of the things I want to point out is that we are gapping up this morning. Now, let's jump over to the Dow. Um, really quickly and if we look at the Dow we can see that we're pushing back up here toward a resistance level in the chart and if we were to measure our move from about right here up to where we could open we have rallied um, seven to eight hundred points here in the Dow in just three days and we're pushing against a resistance level now of course that resistance level could actually be up here just a little bit higher but we want to make note of the fact that we could be pushing into some price resistance and 800 points in three days not not something that we should ignore so one of the things I want to talk about this morning is the caution about being complacent. You know, we had some really great profits being reported yesterday in right way options and made some really good money just following the price action like we always do. But one of the things we want to avoid doing is becoming complacent. Remember, we have a ADP number this morning. We have a jobless number tomorrow, and then we have the big unemployment situation coming on Friday. And if you guys caught the news yesterday, at the end of the day, there was, or yesterday afternoon, there was a conversation from one of the Fed speakers that painted a very grim picture for the market, the unemployment situation, the rising consumer debt to historic levels um, because of the pandemic. And gave a pretty grim picture and kind of leaning toward that recessionary talk that no one likes to hear but we probably ought to be thinking about so one of the things we want to stay bullish but we don't want to become complacent price action right now is showing us trends we have a beautiful trend here in the Dow it continues to hold we held the 50-day moving average but that doesn't mean that we should just be wildly bullish and never thinking that there is an opportunity um, that sellers could come in and profit taking could occur now this morning we have seen um, European markets it's kind of seesaw back and forth between positive and negative numbers and we've seen the futures that were up well over 200 points when I got up this morning about 4 30 um, well up over 200 points they've started to come in just a little bit here this morning as we head toward that ADP report so let's not get overly complacent thinking that there's not going to be any profit takers out there in the market because they could even easily show up particularly after that ADP report and as we start looking forward into the next couple of days of these jobless numbers and um, unemployment situation here in the market so keep that in mind and just don't uh, gloss over all of that and ignore it now one of the things we've been able to do so far is we have been able to whitewash all of this unemployment with massive governmental spending the thing is, I don't know of any pending spending that's coming out um, for the remainder of this week. And the fact that we pushed the employment situation report off a week, um, it normally comes out the first Friday of the month, would suggest maybe we should take a little bit of caution and just just prepare for that possibility that we may not be able to just mask that over and forget about that number coming in on Friday. So keep that in mind and remember profit takers in a gap up open 
are not out of the question. We get those pops and drops. So let's watch that carefully. And as we pop into a price resistance level here in the chart, we want to be thinking about that possibility of occurring. So don't become complacent. Let's take a look. The technicals of the chart remain very good. We're holding above our 50 day moving average. Notice our shorter term averages have crossed up above that 50. But let's not ignore the fact that the 50 day moving average is still in decline. It has not turned back up yet. So it's not providing a whole lot of support. We did get a confirmation of that on Monday. But if sellers were to really come in, if that jobless number or those jobs numbers really start to weigh heavily on the market, don't fool yourself. We could slip right below that declining 50-day moving average. So just don't become complacent. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY, very similar situation. We're gapping up this morning, looking pretty good here overall, trying to beat that 500 day moving average again, which is giving us some resistance. As you see yesterday, we tried to push above it. We've pushed above it here before and ended up sliding back down. So this morning we're gapping up and we'll have to wait and see whether or not um, profit takers come in there or if we get some follow through buying going on um, after um, you know some of these numbers today so let's watch that closely just kind of keep in mind that the more and more we push up toward these resistance highs we run into that possibility of banging our head into that resistance and pulling back it's also entirely possible that the bulls will push on through you know we've been able to ignore an awful lot in this market here lately we could push on through and go up to that 200 day moving average but let's just be aware of the fact that all of these jobs numbers will eventually come, um, will bear some pretty heavy weight on the market. Let's take a look at the Qs. QQQ, been the strongest on the indexes by far, remains the strongest of the indexes. But let's not ignore the fact that yesterday we ran up here, we tested a resistance high. We tried to poke through there and we couldn't do it. Um, we poked up there and then we saw that pullback here at the end of the day. We're trying to push back up here this morning, trying to put on a brave face this morning, pushing up into this level. Let's watch that carefully and just remember we could see some profit takers there. Also, uh, take note that if we pull, do pull back, we have some great support in price here on the NASDAQ and really um, a long potential way down here to our 50 and 200 day moving average. Not saying that we couldn't fall down through there, but we have a lot of price support here to hold us first. So let's watch and wait that. I don't want to give too, too bearish a picture here um, on this, but there is that little bit of concern that maybe coming in um, right here at the moment. Let's take a look at IWM. Now IWM just couldn't get its act together yesterday. It tried, it popped up, and just all day saw a little bit of stress, a little bit of pushback. It is trying to lift up a tiny little bit this morning, but it's really not participating like the other indexes trying to show that bullishness this morning. So we'll wanna take a look at that carefully um, that possibility that IWM could be a little bit of a leading indicator uh, for that potential profit taking that could occur today. Let's watch that carefully. Let's hope that's not the case. Let's hope the bulls hold this up and show proof of that. But just that little hint of bearishness that we don't want to ignore. Keep in mind that 50 day moving average here is still declining as well. Let's take a look at the VIX. Now the VIX had a little bit of seesaw problem yesterday. We kind of shot up and went down and just kind of bounced around in here. Um, the VIX just kind of hanging out here. Now, what I wanted you to, to notice is that what we've got so far is we've got a great downtrend in play. We rally up, we hit this, this, these trends, and we reject that. But we also have to make note that yesterday we caught that little bit of rally here at the end of the day, and we have a tiny little possibility of a higher low here showing up in the VIX. So is it possible fear starts creeping back up? Yes, but we are underneath some resistance levels here in the chart. We're underneath our 50-day moving average and, and other moving averages here 
in the VIX. So probably not a massive um, increase in fear unless we really start feeling that heavy weight of the jobless number. So let's watch that close uh, today. A couple possibilities um, exist in there. Let's take a look at T2122. It is the four week new high, new low ratio. Now, I got to be honest, one of the things that concerns me just a little bit about the rally that we've had the last couple of days is take note here. We've rallied, but we didn't really change a whole lot in T2122. What that tells me is that the breadth of the rally was pretty weak. It was pretty stagnant. There were key stocks out there, big index stocks that moved us up. We saw Microsoft and, and big index stocks moving us up yesterday but it didn't get a whole lot of participation by um, uh, the, the entire market. There was, it wasn't as broad based as I would hope to, um, to have seen. So one of the things we wanna watch for gapping up this morning, we could hit some levels up in here, but that possibility that we could turn, um, watch that closely. When we can't, we don't get a whole lot of mojo in the market. We don't get a whole lot of breadth follow, follow through when we just, just a few stocks are leading us. That's always a concern in here in T2122. So let's watch that closely. Please understand, I'm not trying to paint a bearish picture here. I'm trying to say, let's not get complacent. Let's not forget that the bears are here. And sometimes um, they try to provide a little trickery here in the market with a morning gap and can possibly um, see some profit taking after that point. So watch that close. Let's take a look at um, our economic calendar for today. And the thing that we're leading up to um, here this morning is we're leading up to the ADP report. Now I'm I've already got this pushed over here so we can see the consensus on the ADP. The ADP is expected to come out minus 20 million. Minus 20 million. Now they missed huge last time and ADP has been um, really missing out, uh, uh, missing on a lot of numbers, but that is a huge shift. And notice the consensus range, 22 and a half million up to uh, 9.3 million. So kind of an interesting range here, very wide range in that ADP report. Um, it's going to be interesting to see um, how that comes in and if that has a psychological effect on the market. Let's watch that closely and carefully. Other than that, if we take a look at the calendar here, there's not a whole lot going on except that petroleum status number that obviously can have an effect on the market if we see and continue to see increased build in supplies but if that starts to show um, the impacts of um, the production cuts and things from OPEC and Russia and, and things like that, we could start seeing that support prices as well in the oil sector. Keep in mind, we have another Fed speaker here today. And then just a note, um, as you kind of get through the rest of this day, let's remember we got that big jobless claims number tomorrow morning before the market opens that we're going to have to uh, grapple with. And then Friday, that employment situation number, which will be the biggest number of the week. So keep that in mind. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar. We have a massive number of earnings today. Uh, about 475 companies reporting earnings today. And, you know, we've seen some major impacts. What's interesting is that we continue to push the market higher, even as we hear from um, stocks like Disney, um, you know, after the bell yesterday that just reported awful numbers. And they even kind of leaned to the, the fact that next quarter could be, uh, we may not see the full impacts until next quarter. So uh, not a good situation here. Now, they did have the great benefit of the coronavirus and parents and everything trying to entertain the kids all home from school, cranking up uh, those subscriber numbers of their Disney streaming service to over 54 million. But obviously, uh, you close all of those parks and that's going to have a massive impact. Um 
on that company. And, and, and obviously reopening those is going to be difficult and time consuming and how many people are going to show up, nobody really knows. So those impacts are still coming in. So we're getting lots and lots of bad reports and reports where, where companies aren't doing very well. And yet we're ignoring it. And um, I wonder how much longer we're going to be able to continue to do that. We're ignoring the, the negative earnings growth for this year so far. So with that in mind, let's take a look at some of the companies that are reporting today, some of those notables. And there's way more than I could even come close to uh, showing you here this morning. Um, one that might be interesting to kind of keep an eye on is Peloton. Peloton looks like it's gapping up this morning. Um, this is that uh, fancy web connected um, um, exercise equipment and they've had a very big plus or bonus um, with uh, the virus because all the gyms are closed. People uh, apparently have been picking up the Peloton type equipment. Um, very high priced equipment. Um, but they're seeing a nice benefit with people maybe staying home or having to stay home and getting their exercise in. Uh, Peloton uh, looks like it has been benefiting uh, considerably in that. Take a look at DDD, DDD reporting today. We have ALD reporting today. Um, General Motors has already port reported this morning. They eked out a profit, even though uh, they've been shut down. And but um and just tremendous impacts from the virus situation but they eked out a profit so we're looking just a little bit higher here this morning holding into that little tiny uptrend um gddy go daddy whoops there we go. GoDaddy um, will be reporting today. Obviously, they may not have uh, too much of an impact from the virus, so we may want to watch that. Um, another company, Etsy, Etsy getting some big benefits out of this uh, pandemic. People buying online, and you can see, looks like it's gapping up this morning. How about Lyft? We know Lyft is going to have substantial impacts to this. Um, a pandemic so watch those closely um odp um office depot um tough to call this one a a major notable anymore down here in a dollar two dollar stock but office depot gapping up this morning um on their report it looks like we have um pzza here's a good stock that could be benefiting from the pandemic a lot of folks buying online you can see i had an alert on this chart and this is still looking very very good um looks like it's moving just slightly lower this morning on its report uh, PayPal PayPal another company that could get some grand benefit out of um, the pandemic gapping up here this morning on its report obviously a lot of people doing um, online uh, purchasing and that is helping uh, that stock so watch that close how about um, Shopify Shopify is another one of those online retailers Looks like they're gaining here this morning, just slightly, getting some benefit here from the pandemic. Um, but there's going to be all of those stocks that don't benefit, like STAY, Extended Stay America, might be having some trouble. Um, as a result, we may see some problems in other places around the market as well. So let's keep a close eye on these earnings reports and just remember, lots of price movement can occur. Um, one of the things we've been able to do so far is ignore um, any of the bad and only focus on the good. Um, wonder how long that will continue. Um, just remember to stay focused on those prices. Let's take a look at um, some stocks that could be setting up uh, today. But before we do that, if you guys wouldn't mind, if this is the first time you've seen these videos please do me a favor and click that subscribe button on youtube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you can be notified every time i post one of these videos and also if you could do me a favor if you find these videos to be helpful please 
click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. I truly, truly appreciate it. You guys are awesome. So places that you can look, there's some uh, good stocks all over the place setting up potential patterns. Take a look at Glaxo. Glaxo GSK looking good here, rallying up. One of the things I like about this pattern is that we, we um, had this really tight range in here of trading and we have that tight range over here as well what that does is it sets up this massive um, inverted head and shoulders pattern so what I've done is I've, is I've set an alert up here and I'm watching and waiting to see if Glaxo can get things going here after this little consolidating move and pop up through so keep an eye on on that chart. How about iRobot? iRobot also potentially setting up. Now we have two potential trends working here as you can see. We have this pretty sharp trend. Now when I see a real sharp trend like that it makes me think we could get more of a consolidation and so I also marked out this trend on the chart with the whole idea that this stock may just kind of settle into a range here. Slide out here toward that trend before it begins to move. So kind of keep an eye on iRobot. Humana looking good here yesterday. This is breakout territory. We've moved up sharply. We consolidated that support in here for about a month, and now we're starting to perk higher. Take a look at Humana Healthcare stocks looking pretty good. Wayfair. Wayfair, big pop yesterday on its earnings report, gapping up nicely and pulling back. We're gonna have to watch and wait on this for a little bit of rest or consolidation in here before I'd want to jump on Wayfair, but keep an eye on that chart. Big, beautiful move yesterday. Um, NLOK, one thing I'll tell you about NLOK is the options in this are terrible. But what I do like about this stock is that we're holding this price support and we're holding a trend and we have this nice sweet gap above that could potentially be filled. So keep an eye on NLOK, it would be a, more of a stock trade, but watch this in here as we slide over toward this trend and that possibility of that bullishness to push us higher. Hey, on the negative side, I don't wanna just be, uh, you know, I've talked about the possibility of downside. Take a look at AMD, now AMD, got a little problem here in this price pattern you can see we have a top that we hit we've attempted to break through that a couple of times and now we have that potential of a lower high this morning um, you can see this morning we're gonna open up about where we closed maybe even a little bit higher but let's watch that carefully this could be the setup for that failure up here where we've kind of topped this out at least for the short short term so watch that close if you're looking for a short position so there's a few stocks for you to look at this morning a few ideas that you might want to put on a list everyone I want to wish you all a fantastic day I want to wish you great trading great profit Take care of yourself, stay safe, and we'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning. Have a great day, everyone.